Um, let's go to Thursday now because I thought Thursday was also fascinating for different reasons. Um, at about about 12 o'clock or so um, Eastern, we got the tweet from Dustin Poirier. I think we have it where he said the fight was off. He was at ATT, said the fight is off. I'm still going to keep training. Now let's take a few steps back on the Monday after this fight against Benoit St. Denis was announced. And I remember it. Uh, I was just about to go to bed. The bills had just beaten the Miami dolphins to win the AFC East. I'm buzzing. I'm on Twitter and Dana drops two fights, DP versus BSD at 299, and Charles Oliveira versus Armin Sarukian at 300. And so everyone's buzzing. On this show, I was sitting here saying, you know, it's important to note that sometimes these fights get announced and they're not done just yet. I have no problem telling you that I knew he had not agreed to it because I talked to him. Anytime these fights get announced... I always, if I have a good relationship with the people involved, I ask them, is this true? Is this accurate? Did you agree? I could tell you there's another fight on 300. One of the particulars has not agreed to yet. I'm not going to say which fight it is. And I'll tell you, it's probably not a main card fight, but there's another fight on that card that was put out before one of the fighters agreed to. And as of this second, they have not agreed to it yet. And then once the story came out, several managers and fighters said, me too, me too, me too. And so I would check in every so often, has it been rectified? Has it been agreed to? Has it been rectified? Has it been agreed? Now we get all the way to, what was that? I think February 1st, that was. So four or so days ago, on the Thursday, the tweet comes out. And what was so interesting about it was, now this started the, the snowball of, wait a second, they were promoting it, tickets are on sale, it's one of the marquee fights on the card. It's the co-main event. Why would you do this? For whatever reason, Dana's in this, this mindset right now where he wants to break all the news. When he posted that text conversation with BSD, which he viewed as some sort of dunk over the media and our boy Guilherme Cruz, I didn't really see it revealing anything other than the fact that he tells the fighters not to announce the news. I shot it. Stay quiet. And, you know... We're going to put it out ourselves. BSD's involvement in the fight was never in question. We knew he was in. Poirier's involvement was in question. And nothing that he revealed backed the notion that DP was in. And so we're all talking about it. Hopefully this gets rectified. Hopefully it gets fixed. Hopefully, you know, maybe this is public negotiation 101. And it ends up being just that. A couple hours later, we get the other tweet from DP saying, oh, jump the gun, you know, couldn't get a hold of my manager. It's all been rectified. I'll see you in Miami. And then, of course, there's the tweet right over there. All the, the zombies come out saying, you guys got it wrong. The media got it wrong. First of all, you're all a bunch of idiots. You're all a bunch of sheep. Anyone who believes that just doesn't understand how the fight game works and, dare I say, business works as well. The media got nothing wrong. It was never agreed to. He put it out there that he was out. They fixed it because they didn't want egg on their face. Them's the facts. You don't want to believe that? You want to call us haters? Fine. But we didn't do anything wrong. I didn't do anything wrong. Guilherme didn't do anything wrong. No media member who talked about this did anything wrong, including the ones that talked about other fights that had been revealed or announced and hadn't been agreed to. Just like the Sean Brady fight, he was injured when they put that out there. And so there's this rush to put out this news to announce these fights, I don't know if it's because they want to offset other news. I don't know if it's because they use this news as currency. I know better than anyone. I used to take part in this transaction. I, I benefited from it. They tried to hurt me, you know, um, with it. When I was at ESPN, giving it to the other reporters to try to diminish my value. Now, maybe because of their relationship with some of those reporters, maybe because they don't want to give stuff to ESPN because they're in a bit of a negotiation with them now, maybe because they want to show everyone that we could do it ourselves. I don't know what it is. They want to put it out there. But I can assure you, when you see those announcements, the fights sometimes aren't signed, sometimes aren't verbally agreed, sometimes aren't even close to being verbally agreed. And this is what happened here. And so they can go around saying the media did this, this, this is what they do, this is what they make up, all this other bullshit. None of it is true. We talk to people. We talk to sources. We talk to managers. We talk to fighters. You could believe it or not, but we weren't wrong on this one. 
We were not wrong. And then you'll see, you know, the other zombies come to their defense and say, look, like Ali putting out Vicente Luque's contract and his tax ID number, his contract, what does that prove? Again, no one said Vicente was not in. Brady was the one we were talking about. DP was the one we were talking about. What are you guys proving? Just because one side of the equation, I would hope at least one side of the equation is in. If both sides aren't in, then we have a real, real problem. If one side is in, all right, at least you got one side to agree. And you feel like you'll be able to get the other side to agree. It's a formality. The public pressure will get him to agree. I don't know what the line of thinking is. That's a question for them. But this is a tale as old as time. They have been doing this. Trust me, I know. I know. I, I, I used to benefit from this relationship. I know. Putting out stuff before fighters agree to it is a practice as old as time. It ain't going to change. If it's verbally agreed, that's one thing. But to put something out there before someone officially agrees to it is just not the right way of doing business. I'll talk as myself, as a freelancer. Let's say I'm in talks with Outlet X to do a show for them. And we haven't quite agreed to everything. I'm not even talking about signing because sometimes I'll, I'll do stuff without even signing. There are some things that I've done the whole job and I didn't sign anything. But, you know, there's a word, there's a handshake. You feel good about it. If we're talking about X, Y, and Z and we haven't agreed to it and they come out and say, all right, Hawani's doing a show for us, I wouldn't feel too good for it about it. I would feel like that's a bit of a, I don't know, a sneaky move. And so this happens. I don't know why it happens. I'm, I'm, I'm baffled by it. But it just shows, once again, the difference between boxing and MMA, and in particular UFC. Do you think Eddie Hearn and company would do this to an Anthony Joshua? Do you think Top Rank would do this to a Teofimo Lopez or a Keyshawn Davis? It's more of a promoter-fighter relationship as opposed to an employee-employer relationship. You're going to fight on this date. And if you don't fight on this date, we're going to punish you, we're going to sideline you, or we're going to announce this and hope that the public pressure will get you to agree to it. It's the fight game, and it's been happening since I started covering this sport over 15 years ago. This is nothing new. Um, credit to DP, and I don't know what he's going to say on the show, and, and, and my feeling is he's going to move on and, and not talk about it, and I totally understand that. It, you know, no one wants to, you know, be in some sort of conflict with their promoter or whomever they have a business relationship with. He seems to be happy. He got what he wanted, but he had to do this in order to finally get what he wanted because this was dragging out over a month. I think the announcement came on January 10th and we're almost a month out from the fight. It's crazy. And I couldn't believe that people's takeaway was you guys got it wrong. You see, you see, it was on all uh, the whole time. Oh my God. Sometimes I want to bash my head against the wall when I see some of these takes. Now, over time, it seemed like the majority of people understood what had just happened a good old-fashioned public negotiation, a, a standoff, if you will. But definitely some people who are, you know, who are drinking the Kool-Aid, who are like, no, it was on all the time. Show me the text conversation. He showed us the one with BSD. Let's see the one with the Poirier's team. Let's see that one, if we got it wrong. If we're so off on this, if we're so wrong on this, let's see that one. Can we see it? No Photoshop. No cat. So anyway, uh, the good news is, it all worked out. Poirier's happy. UFC's happy. BSD's happy. Um, but, you know, no no one is immune. No one is immune. And they'll get mad that I'm saying this. And, you know, they're, they're uh, you know, the um, the house managers will get mad. But they all know it's true. They all know it's true. And this is just the fight business. No one said it's it's rainbows and lollipops. This is the fight business. And in particular, I would say this is the MMA business. Um, this is just the way it is. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it very much. Hey, if you like this video, give us the old thumbs up. Subscribe as well. You can get many more of these videos on the channel. So please do that. We would love you forever if you did so.